Hello and welcome back to Railroads Online. So today we are in one of the new locomotives, the 1024 Baldwin, which is what we numbered it, obviously, as you can see. Uh, tried to keep this one we to the picture as close as possible, except the onion stack. But quite frankly, when I get a chance to put an onion stack on something, I'm doing it because those are the ones I like. So that is there and we will take a quick rundown of the new locomotive do have to like how the knuckle coupler release thing is back here so hopefully when knuckle couplers actually kick into the rolling stock and or more things we actually start get to using that and instead of it just being there for now so that'll be kind of cool looking forward to that um, only thing that stands out about this one to me that isn't, you know, super nailed down is, as you can see there, the number four is floating. Not that we haven't had, or the one from this side. The numbers kind of float off instead of wrapping around. We've had that problem on locos in the past, so nothing super new in that case, and nothing specific to this locomotive. That's just kind of a number thing. Obviously, as I said, we've seen that before. And so there we go. We did name this one Big Green because, well, it's big and it's green. So there we go. And we will go see what it does. Open up some of the doors here. Windows and sunroof. While we are at it. Front door for some ventilation. There we go jumping in are going to this is the first time loaded with this one so we'll just have to kind of see what it does i know when we hooked up to the stack i had a uh, brake on the flat car for the first flat car didn't take it off and it pulled the thing right through the brake like it wasn't even there totally felt like the train was free flowing so i'm assuming this one is probably the new powerhouse tractive efforts and weight Yes, it comes in under the Climax tractive effort-wise, but weight and all the rest of it. This one's probably the new powerhouse on the rails. We'll just have to see how that goes. Plus, for those who've been watching the channel for a long time, I'm not the biggest fan of the Climax. Not that I don't absolutely like the look of it, because I do. I think it's one of the best-looking locomotives we've had in the game. It looks like a true workhorse. I've just never been a big fan of the wheel spin issue that goes on with that one so i don't intend to use it and so for me anyway this one will probably be the new king of the rails i'm not sure exactly it, it's um weighs a little less and it has a little more power than the class 70 so we would assume that this one probably pulls more did fill the tender with water which took quite a while so that'll still be filling up as we're going along on the route working out the new advantages or disadvantages however you take it with coal and what the new process is going to be there looks like the tenders hold quite a bit i mean thousands of scoops of coal seem to be the the numbers if you actually start looking at it uh, we had looked, I totally forgot how much this one holds, but I know it's like six or nine thousand, something like that. And I do find this one to have the coolest whistle in the game. Not that, you know, some of the other new ones got some pretty neat whistles. I've always been a big fan of the Eisler's whistle, but I do think this one is probably my new favorite anyway. So there you go price tag on this locomotive a little over 7,000 was uh, close to 72 I think by the time we picked out the options and went with what we liked definitely a fast locomotive and a powerhouse so coal and power update does seem to be the order of the day as we have coal and we now have Plenty of powerful locomotives or picked up a few more powerful locomotives anyway that's for sure looking forward to getting a chance to run in them all but we had to start somewhere and we figured this was the one 
being this was the teased to green loco that we were looking at I have to be honest I always kind of assumed this was going to be a C16 didn't turn out that way so but happy with the locomotive either way looks good runs good sounds good do like the sound of this one and the green well I'm not super green fan but the green looks good on this I like the, the tone of the green I guess as you as it would be so that's all kind of cool Try not to blow this thing off the rails as we do know it goes pretty fast. Not sure what the actual speed numbers are or where it stacks up against other locomotives at this point. Um, have not had those numbers come in yet, so be an interesting thing to go find out though. It does seem like it's pretty fast, or probably just as fast as the Cook 280. That's my guess. Almost wish you didn't have the number on the stack here because it's got it on the light, so it seems like it's a little too much. But it's like when you put the number on here, the number there should maybe disappear or something. I wouldn't mind seeing that. But then it'd just be kind of tricked out. So this one does definitely have air brakes where the compressor also does have the generator with the electric light. Speaking of which, we can drop that off and see if you can hear it as it spools up. That's kind of neat. Uh-oh. I think we actually went blowing by our, our stop. Well, we're going to miss the turn, so we'll just kind of run it around. We'll probably just run it around the ironworks here quick. Have to check our switches as we go in. Good, good. Looks like we are clear. It really does pull the load, like absolutely nothing's behind it. It's going to be interesting to see when this track goes, you know, they're not vertical, but when this one goes uphill, it goes uphill. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how this one handles the 6, 6.5% six grade that we have coming up here. We wouldn't have missed the turn. We'd be on it already, but that's what you get for gawking at the new locomotive. I do have to say I like having some of the color options. I know that um, some people are not the biggest fan of some of the new color options. I know some of them I think are a little bright and a little maybe not for me, but hey, let's be honest, not every color choice is for everybody. That's why they have choices. So that's kind of my take on it. Uh, update in the end, I think it's pretty good. I think we had some, you know, shock value right off of the bat of things that we expected, things uh, that we didn't, quite frankly, expect, and how everybody took to all of that. Most of it, I think, is pretty good. Seems like most of the community reaction is pretty good. Be it nice to actually put in some of the new facilities and stuff like that when we get a chance have not as of yet used them not sure which ones i'm going to use and or where yet so kind of just holding off um putting things out still haven't decided whether i'm actually even going to use a coal tower or whether my plan is just to drive out to the coal mine did do enough testing yesterday with locomotives to 
figure out that you can um, dump coal straight out of the coal mine into the hopper or into the tender, excuse me. And you don't actually have to take it to the coal tower or anything. So, you know, if you're not opposed to just driving out to the gas station, you can just get gas or coal in this case out of the coal mine and you don't even really need the coaling towers. Um, I know it appears that you do not get paid for dropping off coal at the coaling tower. So it isn't like, you know, that's going to be a profit load anyway. So I don't know that for me, I may just continue to run out to the coal mine to fill them. As in, uh, because I just don't quite frankly see the need to run loads that don't get paid for. Might as well just run the loco to, to the coal mine and fill it up is kind of my take on it so i'm not sure how that'll change or alter over time might leave some coal towers around for you know quick filling of things but if we don't really burn coal that fast out of the tinders i don't see the hard time of just driving a, a train or a locomotive out to the coal mine every once in a while so that may be my plan anyway <laughs> may be easier than working in a bunch of coal towers in different places, things like that. Well, it's definitely not going to blast up the hill. Anyway, so we're just going to have to see how this runs. be interesting. Flat ground, the thing takes like a, like crazy. We'll just have to see when we hit the hit the hill hill here, which will be coming up shortly. Alright, and now we're kind of on go time. So we will start winding it up and let it go. Don't need to throw them off on the curve. And now we'll see if we have enough power to pull all six cars loaded. And we should, hopefully, and hopefully it's not just straight flying, flying over. Otherwise we'll end up adding more cars to this train see what it actually does again that curve down there is about six and a half percent then the rest of this goes at about six percent to the top of the mountain and goes back down on the other side at around four and a half percent except for the parts that we ran at like you know I think part of it's like 1.5 percent just because we didn't need to keep at such a crazy angle so some of that kind of flattened out over there but we'll just kind of have to see how it, it climbs as it's definitely slowing down right here. So we'll have to see. The 280 Cook, for those who haven't seen it in the videos there, they do definitely slow down to, a, you know, as slow a chug as you could possibly get on this track. So not expecting a lot different from this is because I quite frankly don't think this locomotive is super more powerful than the 280 cook little more but not a heck of a lot more and hopefully it's at least the same and can actually get this up and around so we'll just have to see as we are definitely bogging down We are still moving along. We already know from the track here that once we get around the curve, we're pretty good to go. And we know that this is about the hardest pull on the layout right here at this turn. And probably with this load, quite frankly, as the hoppers when they come back over here are empty. So it's either going to be the beams or the rails coming over here. So, I don't know that we're going to be adding any way cars to this one. Doesn't look like it's maybe got that much extra in the bank, but it does look like it's going to do the run. So, it looks like we'll be pulling one of the cooks 
off and putting that back towards logs or cordwood as we do need locos there. But there we go. First time over the pass. That, bring that down. Definitely made it up the pass with no problem. All six cars are still there, intact and with us. So that's a positive. Still would really like to get a away car on the back of here if I can, though. I just don't know if it's going to have the, the power to do it. But I guess we'll take a shot at it at some point. see what we can get need to fill everything back up out here as we did empty the coal mine to buy this locomotive for sure this one being uh, pretty sure this is the most expensive locomotive in the game now seven thousand dollars definitely the first seven thousand dollar loco I purchased anyway in the game so we are moving up on the price tags One has to hope with more expensive locomotives coming in the game, we do get some sort of uh, more valuable cargo maybe at some point to offset some of that. It would be kind of nice. Or just got to hurry up and get to the oil barrels, and I guess we don't have any of that kind of problem. So, Otherwise, some of the coal locos might be a little harder to pick up along the way. A little bigger investment, more time investment in them. Worth it or not worth it, that's a, that's a call for everybody to have to make. As you can definitely still play the game with the wood locos if you don't care for spending as much on the coal. I know one of the questions raised with is one of the coal locomotives is a tier 2 coal locomotive. And at tier 2 you can't have coal cars. So you would just have to basically drive the locomotive out to the coal mine to fill it. If that one's fillable out at the coal mine, don't really know. The only one I saw filled out at the coal mine so far um, was one of these. So we'll just have to see how all that works with all the different locomotives as we go. Here we go. Not stopping on this go through. We will be around the loop and then we will be stopping. Seems really weird having the coal in. The, I gotta be honest because I was just thinking, I'm like, wow, I got, I'm dumping coal, not picking up coal. <laughs> As we're used to seeing the loads, loaded hoppers with coal, and that's just a drop off. So, new thing to get used to there. You like how the generator is up here in the center. Looks pretty nice. Steam coming off it and all. And you can shut that down and not have one more steam jet out there if you didn't want. I do like the extension to get the steam up over the cab. That's kind of cool. Again, I'm not sure how crazy historically accurate all of it is, but it's definitely a good looking locomotive. And it looks pretty much like the picture I saw, so to me it looks pretty spot on. No complaints here. And this one I do like the color options on it, so that is a thing. That wheel slip, I'm going to grind all the rails down to nothing. Now with the Either the, either the rail or the wheels. Something's going to wear out eventually, one would think. Because I do lock them up quite often. So we definitely needed beams out here. I mean, we don't have any. So, start getting some of these dropped off. Hopefully we left enough roll in here. But that's going to happen. Without having to go back to the locomotive. 
not exactly sure. Almost doesn't seem like it. Alright, we'll drop those. And then we will take a run up and go ahead and hit the gas a little more. It's kind of different having the number huge like that on the tender. I think we're... At least I'm not really used to that, so that's a little different. Um, I like it. Just pointing out it's different. Alright, so we'll bring this one easing into the final stop there. Alright. Give it one last hoot on the whistle there. Probably pulled too forward. Certainly did. So, we'll be backing up just a little bit. Anyway, not great with that lineup, that's for sure. Alright, roll this thing back just a touch. That should get the job done if we can get there in time. Do know that some of the jumping around with the locomotives launching you backwards, launching you forwards, some, some are a little different right now, so jumping around on the loco can be a little different. We have noticed that, so that'll start getting some coal into the coal mine again. And as I said, we'll be adding some facilities out here, but I think, there we go, 1024 did that one. Worked its way up the hill without any problems, and that was definitely a a success so we'll call that one a win say thanks for tuning in remember if you get a chance like share subscribe subscriptions are free but they sure do help the channel y'all have a great day